What's up you guys, Godzilla Fan Freaks coming at you today with another figure review. And today we're going to be reviewing one of my favorite kaiju and kind of a hard Bandai to come across nowadays, the Bandai Dagarla from Rebirth of Mothra 2. I always liked Dagarla. He didn't, uh, I mean, a lot of people don't really like Rebirth of Mothra 2. I want to say it's probably my favorite out of the trilogy. It just has great music. I kind of, you know, I like the story. I'm always a sucker for those kind of underwater temple, you know, type stories that have to do with all that stuff and everything. So, um, and Dagarla was an awesome original kaiju in my opinion. Uh, he just has an awesome design, awesome powers, awesome backstory. In a way, he's kind of a reptilian type of Hedra, if you think about it, because the way they created Dugarla was to stop pollution. Well, not stop pollution, but, um, well, no, he was created to stop pollution, so actually he's the opposite of Hedra. Let me back up there a little bit. But uh, he, it would be great to maybe see Dugarla go head-to-head -head with Hedra, maybe, for like a fantasy fight, you know, type thing, since Hedra's the monster pollution, and Dugarla kind of stops pollution, but then he creates his own pollution, creating the barum, uh, you know, sea star things that spit that ass crap or whatever. But enough about a little bit of backstory, let's get straight on into the figure with paint job. Uh, the Bandai de Garla has, you know, it's, you know, it's respectable for the paint job and everything like that. Pretty much all the colors you see here, what you saw in the movie, pretty much de Garla, pretty much for his base, is kind of like that dark, deep kind of ocean green, I guess you would call it very nicely well applied to pretty much everywhere on his body. Other areas, like his uh, top kind of fin dorsal plate and his back dorsal fin plates and stuff, and then the end of his tail, and then his wings, and then his kind of fins down here for the backs of his, of his feet, as well as the front of his chest area kind of have that light tannish, almost kind of like an ivory color. And then his eyes are kind of, his eyes are pretty much green in the center, but they have uh, kind of like a goldish yellow, um, you know, uh, painted on them as well. So that's a very nice touch there for the eyes. His teeth are white. And then he kind of just has a little bit of, you know, pink on his underbelly here, on his, on it, a little bit on his underbelly of his tail, on his underbelly of his abdomen area here, and a little bit worked into his chest. Overall, uh, very nice paint apps all around for Degar for this uh, Degarla. Not bad at all. Considering this is probably, I think, this is maybe the only good figure of Degarla that exists, other than I think there might be some model pieces out there, but I'm not entirely sure about that. And then I think there's like some mini chibis, you know, or some old vintage, not vintage vintage stuff, but you guys know what I mean. Like when the movie came out, there was some other Degarla pieces, but there wasn't anything legitimate for a figure except this, which uh, which this figure comes in like a pack, like a Rebirth of Mothra 2 figure pack. I believe it comes in a pack with like Aqua Mothra and Rainbow Mothra, and there's like a little figure figure of the Gorgo creature. So, um, but, uh, you know, you can find the Garla sold separately on eBay. That's how I got mine. You know, I just got mine, you know, but just a loose de Garla. But, <clears throat> see, I'm blabbering on. See, I do that too much. Sorry about that, guys. Anyway, into detail with the figure. Uh, very nice skin detail, I want to say, along the face and along his back. All the scales and everything, very, very nicely etched in. All the roughness and wrinkles of his face, very beautifully well done. All the lines and everything and all his dorsal plates running down his back, very nicely done. Same with the fins down here at the tail. All the fins on the edges of the backs of his feet, very, very nicely done. Again, with the skin on the underbelly, very nicely etched into the sculpt. And then, uh, you know, all the... Uh, I like to call them barum. The, the barum can't... Uh, that's what they're called, right? I probably need to watch a movie again, but yeah, I believe they're called barums the sea star things that he uh, creates from eating pollution. But all the little barum cannons on the front here, very nicely well done and detailed. Which in the movie, I believe he only used these two right here. And then when he evolved, which this is kind of the evolved form of Degarla, because these cannon things on his wings here are extended. But I believe in the movie he only used uh, these two that are on his shoulders, and then he used these after he evolved as well. But he also has... Uh, another set of four of them here underneath the top ones here 
but he never used those in the films. But very nice touch of detail, awesome detail just in the chest and everything. His legs very, very nicely and muscular. Very nicely well detailed all the way around with uh, Degarla. No complaints whatsoever. Just every bit of detail is there. No complaints. Now, as far as articulation goes, uh, he's kind of lacking articulation. His wings are kind of a separate piece, but you can, they can't really rotate or anything like that. Um, I mean, they're a separate piece to the mold, but there's no amount of rotation with them or anything whatsoever. So, uh, can't really do anything too much with the wings. Uh, the only movements of articulation are his legs, which are on kind of like a swivel, you know, joint and everything like that. So your, his legs are going to move kind of, you know, pivoted whenever you do rotate them, pivoted outwards, and then pivoted inwards and everything. And then his tail, you know, can spin from, you know, side to side or 360 or whatever. So uh, only three points of articulation on this guy, not very too much. And now the last thing I will go over will be uh, uh, sizing and scaling with other figures, which I only have three figures out here right now. I will size him up with the monster that came before him in the first Rebirth of Mothra movie, which was Desgadora, or Death Ghidorah, however you want to pronounce it. Um, of course, Desgadora is a much bigger Bandai, so he really outsizes the Garla, but still, I don't want to say it's terrible sizing. I mean, Desgadora was huge overall, and Degarla was probably the smallest of the Mothra villains in the Rebirth of Mothra series. So, I want to say sizing may not be too far off. Degarla is probably a little bigger, but, I mean, for anything, if you guys, you know, you know, have these two figures or something like that, I mean, it's nice to have these two guys, and, uh, you know, just have them together on the shelf. I guess all I need now is to get the Grand King Ghidorah Bandai, and then I have one, two, and three. I have all three of the villains from the Monster Trilogy. So maybe I'll do that at G-Fest. Maybe I'll keep an eye out for a Grand King Ghidorah from Bandai. <clears throat> but there's sizing with uh, Des Ghidorah. Uh, I was thinking about bringing out the... Because I don't have any Bandai Mothras or, uh, or, uh, or any of the other Mothras from the Rebirth of Mothra series. I don't have any of those figures to scale him up with. And I looked at him before I did this video... I did kind of put him up against the SH Monster Arts Mothra, but you know, the sizing was just weird. It wouldn't work at all. So the only Mothra that I really have that you could maybe do anything with Degarla with, it probably is too small, but this is the Trendmasters Mothra that I've had forever since I was a kid. But, um, I mean, yeah, it's the scaling probably is off by far, but it's the best I could do for scaling it up with Mothra for you guys, just because I don't have any of the other Bandai Mothras, or any of the Mothras from the Rebirth of Mothra series, and uh, the SH Monster Arts Mothra, like I said, it just seemed like it was too much out of place, so this is as close as I can get for scaling up a Mothra for you guys, but since I do know Degarla did come in a pack with uh, a couple Rebirth of Mothra figures, I wouldn't doubt he would probably size up pretty decent with some of the Bandai Mothra figures, no doubt. And now, last up for scaling, here he is sized up with your basic 6-inch uh, Godzilla Bandai. Uh, nice sizing, you know, is probably the size of, you know, uh, in, in this scale, he's probably, you know, he looks like to be the size of Anguirus or something like that. So, I mean, it's not bad scale, sizing up with a basic 6-inch six, six Godzilla. It's not bad at all. They look good. Nice little fantasy fight, or maybe even a team up. I don't know. Shoot, maybe they'll team up to fight Hedra or something. I don't know. But uh, there he is, uh, scaling for you guys. And I think that's all I got for this review, you guys. Again, he's kind of a smaller Bandai figure. Not too much articulation, not too much to go over with him. He's pretty much short and simple. Again, he's one of my favorite kaiju. I love him. I'm glad I finally did get this figure for a decent price. And uh, that's about all I got for you guys. And, um, yeah. I don't think I'm, I missed anything. So, like always, we're here Godzilla Fan Freaks. Hope you guys enjoyed this review on the Bandai de Garla. Please comment, like, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next video review. Thank you for watching.